Okay, the first thing we're going to do is set up our viewports uh, with our images uh, to use as a background template while we're modeling, uh, which is going to make it a lot easier uh, to make this model. And in the image editor, I've already gone ahead and loaded in the included uh, images that can be found on the DVD uh, in the content folder. And we have the top, back, bottom, front, left, and right. And if you notice now, our left and right uh, should technically be reversed. But as you can see, they're kind of overlaid exactly the same. And it's the same thing with our bottom and our top and our back and our front. And the reason for that is uh, when you switch layers in the background here uh, between right and left, you will see that the image actually flips automatically within Lightwave. And I'll show you that in just a sec. Uh, so we want to make sure that we have top and the back and the right viewports for our setup here. Uh, which is not default. We'll go ahead and hit D on the keyboard. And we're going to go to backdrop. Under top right, we want to go ahead and select top. And then I'm going to click OK and go ahead and zoom in, uh, making sure that your viewports are set to all zoom in together. And just zoom into this image so that we can set this up a lot easier uh, because our default, even if we hit A on the keyboard, uh, this data is not technically considered uh, part of the object, so it will not fit the image to view. I'm going to have it at D, bring back to our display options, and go back to backdrop. And what I want to do now is set our image resolution to 1024, which is the highest. And then I'm going to lower contrast all the way down, and also lower brightness almost all the way down, uh, so that we have these nice dark lines. Because if it's too bright, it's going to be hard to see our points and polygons while we're modeling. Now we're going to go to BL, which is the bottom left viewport, which is our back viewport, and we're going to load in the back. And 1024, bring down our contrast and our brightness almost all the way down, the same as it was before. And now be our image, and that is actually our right, I believe. Yes, it's our right viewport. So we're going to bring down our contrast and our brightness and set it to 1024. And click OK. Now we want to make sure that uh, these images are aligned correctly uh, because they were set up a little bit differently uh, when I made them. That might be off just a little. And the easiest way to check for that is if we create a box right here and bring it down uh, just on the edges we're looking at, uh, you can see that this is lined up on the side right here, but it's not lined up on the bottom. So I'm going to click the space bar just so we can end that tool. And we're just using this uh, temporary box as just a guide to move our images around. Uh, so what I want to do is actually hit T on the keyboard and I'm going to move our box in the back viewport on the bottom left so that it lines up and we're going to adjust the top viewport. So hit D on the keyboard, go to backdrop and uh, TL, so our top left, and under center, uh, the second option here, we're going to move it on the X over to the right, uh, just grabbing our slider and about 20 millimeters looks like it should do it and click OK. And I'm going to delete this box because we don't need that anymore. So we know that that's lined up. We want to make sure other things are lined up. Uh, we have this kind of main artery right here, which is also right here on the top view. And we just want to make sure that that lines up. So I'm going to do Shift in the plus key so that we have our points tool. And I'm just going to lay out points on kind of the edges of that tube, T to move them up. And we can see that they line up uh, pretty close. So that should be good enough. Uh, it's actually going to be difficult to tell on this top view exactly where that seam is just because uh, it is kind of showing a little bit underneath and then since it is rounded it's kind of difficult to tell. That's actually just about perfect. So I can go ahead and uh, hit the delete key which is going to delete those points. And now we have our viewport set up. Uh, now I was mentioning before that when we switch between the right and the left viewport it will automatically flip our image. So if we go to right to the left, we'll see that flips the image automatically. So when you're designing images for their backdrop, you want to make sure that the left and right are actually lined up perfectly. So if we go to our image editor and take a look just in this little preview right here between our left and our right, see so our images are exactly the same. We don't need to worry about flipping them like they would be in the real world because Lightwave does it for you automatically. But it actually can be to your advantage uh, if you know this ahead of time uh, before you actually start creating your reference images because 
then you can use uh, one image as a template for another and you just kind of trace over it uh, to work on stuff on the other side. That's if you have an object that's not completely symmetrical. And if you've already gone ahead and had these uh, flipped so they are uh, real world correct, you can just go into uh, even Windows Paint or a Macintosh Basic Paint program and just flip the image horizontally and then it will match up. Which I actually had to do because technically uh, these sketches we have in the back are not really sketches but renders uh, taken from Modeler in each one of the viewports of the finished model and then I ran it through Photoshop with a filter just so we get these nice lines uh, but I think this looks a lot cleaner than my actual drawing that I had used so this will be a little more accurate and a lot easier to work with. Alright so now we're gonna get started the first thing we're gonna model is this uh, main part of the body or of the heart uh, which has pretty much these two arteries coming off uh, the top of the heart which are right here and one of them splits off and the top one up here actually has other little tubes and arteries coming off of that uh, which we're not going to model just yet we're actually going to do that when we're finishing up the model just because we'll need to have a little bit higher resolution than we're going to be working with right off the bat so I'm going to change this viewport back to the right viewport so we're working uh, correctly and so it's not confusing uh, and should we set up perfect orthographic projection right now and we're going to start out by creating a box. So under Create tab, under the Primitives, Box. Or you can hit Shift X, which will bring up your box tool. And we're just going to lay out our box on the basic shape. So this is the technically the very, very low res version <laughs> of this heart. And I'm just going to go ahead and hit Spacebar. And now what we want to do is metaform this uh, to get some more geometry in here and start working with it that way. Uh, it's a lot easier to work with a box and metaform it a couple of times than it is to use a sphere to model this or to go in and actually create the object polygon by polygon. So now we'll shift D on the keyboard which is going to bring up subdivide polygons and we want to make sure that we select metaform and click OK and that's going to round out the box a bit. Uh, very similar to if we hit the tab key so if I go ahead and undo this and hit the tab key you'll notice that we get that rounded box as well uh, but it, since it's subdivided uh, and not a finished subdivision, that that geometry does not show up. I'll just undo that, Shift D, and go back to Metaform. So it's pretty much the same principle as uh, subdividing, except we're making the change permanent and uh, maybe not as high as uh, as many patches as we would have uh, during that subdivision. Because if I actually hit O on the keyboard, we bring up our general options, and you can see we have six patch divisions. Uh, so before, when I hit tab it actually took uh, each one of our polygons and broke it up uh, six polygons across and six polygons down uh, but with this it doesn't break it up quite as much so it cancel really quick and now we are going to lay out our points and position them uh, to kind of match up with this main part of the heart so I'm going to use the lasso tool which is the right mouse button to just select these points uh, making sure you're holding it down and dragging around your points. Hit T on the keyboard for move and then spacebar to end that tool and deselect with the lasso tool again and just go around and do that on the outside of this model. Make sure we stay in points mode and this is just a very rough idea of where it's at. You don't have to be very specific because actually when we metaform this again all of these points are going to come inward and kind of round that off. Uh, but it's a lot easier to edit something that's low res to get your basic shape than it is editing something high res, which could take a lot more time and be a lot more difficult. So we're just going in here and moving these points on our right view and our back view. And then also on our top view if we need to, just kind of pull that out. Uh, but keep in mind a lot of that is going to be changed once we metaform that. And now I want you to take a look at our perspective view. And actually one note I want to make about the perspective view is that I have uh, independent visibility and rotation on and I also don't have the grid displayed. So if we hit D on the keyboard and go to viewports TR for our top right. I have independent center on, independent rotation, independent visibility, and independent zoom. And that way I can uh, rotate around this object in perspective view and not edit anything I'm doing in any of the other views. And I also have 
show grid off. So that way we don't have the grid kind of uh, getting in the way. What I'm going to do now is actually I want to edit you know, some of these points because you can see they're dipping inward and it's not creating a very round looking uh, smooth object. Uh, I also have this in wireframe shade and that way we can see our actual wireframe uh, but still see other things that are going on and kind of get that nice shaded look to it for the most part. So control T now which is going to open up the drag tool which also can be found under modify drag and I'm just going to grab these points in our perspective view and just kind of play around with this and pull these out. And like I said before it doesn't need to be perfect because it's just the rough uh, model right now. We just want to make sure that we're kind of rounding it so that later we don't have to do too many adjustments uh, because moving one point right now is actually pretty much moving 16 points in the future or so because uh, once we metaform this that point is going to turn into a lot more at least the polygons it's moving are going to turn into a lot more so we're moving this point right here which is actually going to move all the polygons that are going to be created in this area uh, so this way we're just moving one point instead of actually having to go in and edit tons of points later uh, so that looks like it's going to be okay we just have have uh, all that brought out we can bring some of that in if we wanted to for that rough shape okay and now I'm gonna go ahead and hit control or sorry shift D again and bring up subdivide polygons and metaform click OK now you notice that it brought our object inward because what it's doing is smoothing uh, pretty much the whole object so it is going to be a little bit smaller so we just need to size it up a bit which we can do is shift H which is also the size tool and just left mouse clicking and dragging that up a little we're just going to make a little tiny bit bigger and now we're going to do the rest of these adjustments now we don't want to go in point by point uh, selecting groups like we just did to bring in these other parts because it that's just gonna make the model look a little weird because it'll take a lot more tweaking once we get to that point so we're actually going to use the magnet tool so if we do shift and colon we'll get the magnet tool or modify translate magnet now with the magnet tool you can just grab a set of points and you don't even have to click directly on a point uh, just in that area you want to edit and it will kind of bend and twist these different pieces around uh, keep in mind too this is moving uh, most parts of the object so if I just want to bring this little divot in right here you'll notice that it's also moving the top part right here so what we can do is right mouse click and drag out this area of influence which is shows up as this disk and we can just bring in just that little point right there and then right mouse click to hold and hold down and we can move around that modifier so this gives us a much smoother editing option than we were to actually go in and edit these points one by one uh, another thing we can actually do is uh, set this modifier on another viewport and now we've turned our modifier into a sphere so we can edit anything uh, within these two or three uh, modifiers that are showing up in the views which is actually representing a sphere and if you want to reset this so let's say if you uh, don't actually want a modifier on one of the other viewports you just want it on one you can go ahead and click in this gray area down here uh, anywhere in the toolbar that's actually a gray area uh, in any of the tabs it doesn't matter and it will clear out our modifier but we'll still have that tool selected and then we can right mouse click and make a new one if we wanted to so we'll go ahead and hit spacebar to end that tool because we don't need the magnet tool anymore and I'm going to kind of zoom in here and what we actually want to do now is edit some of these polygons because we're going to be using two of these polygons on top to extrude uh, these tubes and we want to make sure these tubes are or the polygons are long enough uh, so that we don't have to do any major scaling uh, once we get to that point. So I'm going to select some polygons here and these are probably the two we're going to be using uh, for this maybe one off to the side a little uh, because we are going to be editing our size of these and we can just go in and use the drag tool to actually move these around. So we just want to find out which ones we need just by selecting them and it looks like that one right here we're going to need so I'm going to hit control T for the drag tool and we can just move these points out and these ones we do want to 
go individually and use them, uh, making sure we have the polygon selected so that we're only editing that polygon's points and not the points of any other polygons. And it just makes it a little easier that way. And we don't really need to worry about the overall effect of the other parts of the object because of this, uh, because we can just go in there and tweak that just a little bit. And I want to bring this over just a little bit more. And then I'm going to hit spacebar, deselect that, and then select our second polygon here. And we can bring that over, or we could actually uh, pull that inward to make it a nice thin polygon and that way we can use this polygon to actually create that second tube which will probably be an easier thing to do and that way get a little more geometry in there and a lot better adjustment All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and size this one too uh, to the correct position just using the drag tool which is control T and just moving those into place making it easier once we extrude these polygons. Okay, so now we're going to select that first one and I'm going to hit uh, Shift F and right mouse click which is using our smooth shift tool which can be found under multiply, extend, smooth shift and when you select smooth shift and right mouse click right away what it does is automatically create your geometry and then you can manually move it into place. So if I hit T now for move, I can move up that extended geometry, which we have right here. And one thing I want to do right away is use the stretch tool, which is H on the keyboard, and using a middle mouse button if you have one. Otherwise, use the control key and uh, left mouse click just to constrain it so it's going up and down. Now we've made our polygon perfectly flat, which is going to make it a lot easier to edit than if it was tilted. T to move. We just want to move this into place and we can't really see the on the back of this too much but we can get a pretty good idea of where it's at based on uh, where our other objects happen to be. And I'm actually going to go in here and drag these points in. Uh, just because we do have a little smooth transition in here and we might even end up taking this polygon and stretching it out and using it for the other two but we'll just take a look uh, after we finish this one and see how it looks and see if we need to do that or not. Okay, what I also want to do now, uh, even though we made it flat, we do want to rotate it slightly because it is starting to curl. So I'm going to hit Y on the keyboard, which is going to bring up our rotate tool, which can be found under modify if you are not using keyboard shortcuts, although I highly suggest you learn keyboard shortcuts because it will speed up your productivity and uh, you'll be a m much better modeler because of it. Alright, so shift F again, right mouse click, T to move, and we're just going to make that ne next extension here, Y to rotate, uh, H for stretch, just to stretch these this polygon inward, just a little Y to rotate, T to move that in, and we just want to build this uh, along uh, that curve, uh, but also keeping in mind that it does curve on top as well. So not just in this direction, but also it does a little bit of a S sort of thing here. So we're going to drag that down just so it's within line. And Shift F, smooth shift that again. Right mouse click, T to move, and Y to rotate, H to stretch it inward. And we just want to work this out along that line. Create another extension. Smooth shifting it, stretching, rotating, and it's pretty much the same thing all the way down until we get to this end point here. Why to rotate? Let's stretch that in and also stretch it a little bit on top here. And then we want to do one more down to the end, rotate that slightly and then stretch it inward uh, so that it's not the same shape all the way around and it slightly tapers. Now one thing we want to do is actually create uh, the hole in the inside and now the mat we're not going to go and create that entire uh, hollowed out area just yet we're going to do that a little bit later 
but we want to get the basic idea of it right now. So shift F, right mouse click, and this time, instead of moving it right away, I'm going to hit H on the keyboard for the stretch tool, and I'm just going to stretch it on our top view. And if we take a look in our perspective view, you can see it's just a little bit in the inside. And now we're going to do uh, one more from there and not move it from this point. So shift F, right mouse click, and then T to move. And now we're moving it inward just a little Y to rotate that in. And H, we can just stretch that just a tiny bit. And now if we hit tab, which is going to turn on our subdivisions, we can take a look at that effect that it created. So we have that nice inside uh, cut and a little bit of hollowness. Like I said, we'll be going and making that more hollow just a little bit later. But right now, we're just laying out our basic shapes. And we just want to make sure we get those right. All right, one thing I want to do, if you notice that we have a lot of these uh, all straight lines, even though it's slightly tilted. And for organic modeling, you definitely want to make sure that your points are lined up correctly and parallel to the tube. And that way, it's kind of bending and twisting a little bit better. Uh, but if you notice, we're looking in the top view, and you can see it's all kind of jumbled up right here. And we really can't tell what's what. So what we can actually do, and the best thing to do, is to hide these polygons. So I'm going to switch to polygon mode, right mouse click, and hold it down for lasso. And I'm going to lasso all these polygons that are not part of that artery or that tube. And hit the minus key on the keyboard, which has hidden all of our polygons now that we're not interested at the moment. And we're just going to go ahead and edit these other parts then. Uh, y to rotate that just a little. Uh, we could also go in Control T and kind of edit these and maybe bring it out just a little on the sides, a little bit more over here. And we could just tweak it as much as we wanted. Uh, but we're going to leave it just about right there right now. And now we want to unhide those polygons we created uh, before and the ones we hid so that we can uh, work with those again. And the, the only way to unhide those is to hit the backslash key, uh, which is right above enter. And just hit that, and that will automatically unhide your polygons. Now, I have noticed what some people do to hide polygons is actually cut them. And I do not suggest doing that at all uh, because it can have some major problems because of it. Um, let's say we selected these polygons and cut them. So, Control X. And now those are no longer uh, in the view and we don't have to worry about them. We can just paste them back in. Uh, but just make some changes to our geometry down here, uh, especially when you're working with subdivision surfaces, because we don't have that smoothing between the points anymore, because that geometry doesn't exist anymore. Uh, it's on our clipboard, but it's technically not there. The, it, the object is not uh, showing that it's there and doesn't think it's there. Uh, another bad thing about that is when we paste it back in, uh, Control V, you'll notice our points are no longer conne connected, and we have this really sharp crease. Now, if that's what you're going for and you want to create a sharp crease, that can be a good thing when you're doing uh, with smoothing effects and polygonal modeling. Uh, but now when you're doing sub-Ds, so then we'd have to hit M on the keyboard and click OK to merge those points back together. And now it's kind of back to where we were. But it's much easier just to hide it and unhide it than it is to cut it and repaste it. And another thing too is if you accidentally uh, copied something or cut something while you were still working on uh, this area when you're trying to have those just hidden, uh, then when you tried to paste that back, they wouldn't exist anymore and they would be deleted and you'd lose all that work. So I highly suggest hiding and unhiding objects when you're working on stuff like this and never use cut to hide an object. But if you are one of those people that does like cutting it, uh, or you have a reason why you have to cut it, I do highly suggest pasting it onto another layer immediately uh, so that you do not lose that information. And I'm just using Control T now and dragging these points out just a little. And we want to just kind of create that smoothing effect throughout the bottom of this tube, I'm just tweaking the model a little. Okay, so now we want to uh, go on 
and create our second tube. 